Okay then, I'm back on YouTube, and man is there a lot to talk about. It's been three years since I last posted a YouTube video, and ever since then I've been hit by a barrage of content from many beloved franchises. But for the most part, they've been very underwhelming. With large companies such as Disney capitalising on the audience's constant need for more of their favourite characters, whether that be in Star Wars or Marvel, streaming services have been pumping out content at a rate which was unprecedented prior to the immense box office success of Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, which concluded the Infinity Saga. But it was Amazon who decided to do something which created a certain amount of unease in me, certainly more than I had felt about any other media. And thus we have The Rings of Power, a series that takes place long before the events of The Hobbit, and the Lord of the Rings. For those of you who have been living under a rock, or in the mines of Moria, in 2017 Amazon took on the monumental task of adapting the work of J.R.R. Tolkien into a series spanning many seasons, hoping to showcase the first and second age of Middle-earth in all its majesty. The series would bear great expectations, considering the success of the Peter Jackson trilogies, The Lord of the Rings, widely accepted as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, trilogies of all time, and The Hobbit, which we don't talk about. Okay. With the series costing around a billion dollars to make, Amazon had the potential for greatness. My only concern was whether they would do justice to the Lord of the Rings fandom and the legacy of Tolkien, or turn the immense name into a gold mine for mainstream audience and political narratives. And oh boy! They accomplished the latter. Hello, I like money. Here's the thing. When any form of media prioritises narrative over plot and story development, both the producer's intentions and the incoherent tone of the product seep through to the viewer. This is especially noticeable in fantasy. Tolkien created a world in which men stood in awe of the beings that transcended them in every way. The Ionor, gods of Valinor, which created such creatures as the eagles and dragons, the likes of which transformed the very landscape of Middle-earth. The elves, who despite their divine stature, would find settlement in Arda, and defend the mortal realm for many millennia, from the menace of Morgoth. The hobbits and dwarfs, who found specialist ways to adapt and survive the ever-changing landscape. This is a world where the spectacular rules supreme, it should not be dragged down to the futility of identity politics, yet somehow it is. Immense amount of visual representation and um, a vast accessibility for every single person in the world um, to be able to stare at a screen and see a version of themselves staring right back at them. So for us to play with each other as we play together in the world every single day is, um, you know, is exactly where it should be and uh, what a great way to um, relive Tolkien's work. This is the truth. No one wants to be represented in the show that sucks. As a child watching the Lord of the Rings films, I had so many questions about the Fellowship's quest, the size and structure of Middle-earth, and wondering when the overwhelming forces of Sauron would confront our protagonists. This is due to amazing world and character building by Peter Jackson. The question, why doesn't anyone in the film look like me, never even crossed my mind, nor should it. This is a fantasy trope where humans are playing second fiddle to the might of the elves and dwarfs. The only representation in the show is our insignificance when we stand alone in the world of Tolkien. And we, the audience, realise that only through fellowship, through alliances with others, can we overcome the force of evil. Actors should be cast on their ability to enact the role given to them, and when this happens they are adored by fans, regardless of their race or gender. Making identity the focal point of promoting your show is pathetic, and the idea that you are going to relive Tolkien's work is insulting, because the Rings of Power does not represent his work, it's your own narrative. Now I will be breaking down the main characters and full episodes in later videos, however there are a few issues I would like to briefly mention. Firstly is what the series consists of. 
Like I said, the Rings of Power was expected to cover the events of the First and Second Age, and parts of the Third Age as well. However, the law will not be based off of the Silmarillion, because the Tolkien estate still owns the rights to this book. Instead, the series is based off the Appendices book series, a six-part book series found at the end of Return of the King that covers the Second and Third Age. Interestingly, not the First Age, which explains why this was covered briefly in a flashback monologue in the first episode. Now, why is this an issue? Because the appendices does not provide a detailed account of the two ages. Rather, it focuses on separate stories during the time period, some of which are not connected to the chronological timeline of Middle-earth. Because of this, there is more leeway for Amazon to decide what the fantasy world can look like. It provides a platform for chaos. More on this in a future video. Secondly is what the budget for the series was actually spent on. Now I can safely say that dialogue and development of actors into their role makes up a salt pinch of the $60 million invested in each episode. From watching most of the promotional material, such as interviews and press conferences, you can gauge a strong idea of how the directors and producers came to selecting their cast, identity of a merit in most cases. To make up for this loss of character building, I was expecting aesthetics that reflected Tolkien's work in every way possible. But to be honest, I would say that the original trilogy, made and filmed in the late 90s and early 2000s, looks better overall, making for an underwhelming display on both directing fronts. I am especially frustrated in the way that the elven characters are portrayed in this series. They are not credited for the accomplishments of their original selves and the unique power which each possessed has now been overshadowed by the mainstream ideas of strength being found only in masculine persona, which I find ridiculous, and is not at all what Tolkien expressed in his books. Galadriel, the Lady of Lothlorien, one of the mightiest and fairest of elves in the Second and Third Age, reduced to a warrior such as Eowyn, her godly status stripped unnecessarily. Gilgalad, the last High King of the Noldor, a once competent leader and protector of Eridor. In the early years of the Second Age, he sent word to Numenor requesting their aid, after sensing evil growing in the east. Now, he is the antithesis of that, refusing to accept the possibility of war returning to Middle-earth and ignoring the word of Galadriel. And Elrond, a well-established character in the Peter Jackson movies. At the end of the Second Age, he rode alongside Gilgalad and Isildur, leading the siege of Barad-dûr and removing the Ring of Power from Sauron's finger. Now, he writes poems in the woods during a time of ever-growing darkness, and seems to have a very feminine temperament. Uncharacteristic, but not unsurprising. As stated before, I am hoping to make more videos that go into more detail about the individual issues within the series so far. I would like to thank you guys for listening to me explain my opinion on the current media landscape. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Now, get on with your lives. If, like, Sauron is hot, I feel like people would be like, I can fix him. <laughs> Look how they mask, my boy.